Hi everybody, thanks for pressing play. This is a two liter hybrid and it's a Honda CRV, what's called an elegance model. Brian's my name, in this video we're looking at this car here. So if there's any information you want on it, please do call, text, WhatsApp, whatever suits 086-843-1945. And we are Fitzpatrick's Garage, a family run business in operation for almost 70 years. And Brian's my name, so if you want to know about scrapping a car, trading in a car, finance, or just any information about this car. Let's start off by going for a bit of driving the car. So there's a push button start over here on the right hand side. You've got a startup sequence and I'm going to show you as we're driving we're going to spend time in electric mode but it'll be a hybrid kind of setup as well we'll have a look at the gearbox we'll have a better look at in a little while when we get further out the road but we'll just start off by driving so if you see here I'm just creeping on the battery to get going and as I move up the road again I'm just creeping on battery but eventually then the engine will kick in and what's nice is this little uh, graph is showing you where the power is coming from you don't need to know but it's nice to know so for a lot of people, if they're unfamiliar with hybrids, the first thing they'll always find when they get into a car like this, it's really quiet when you're driving. And actually in the cabin in these, they also have a nice cancellation function. So it's lovely and quiet. One interesting thing is you're coming up to a junction. You see these paddles here? I can use them and you see the little arrows coming down. It's showing you how much resistance I'm putting on. So instead of freewheeling, you're actually creating energy from the car slowing down. It's called regenerative braking. There's nice power in the car as well. It's much more immediate than what you would find in a diesel car as well. But we'll have a look at acceleration in a little while too. Again down here it's showing me what's going on, so blue means I'm consuming power and then green when I'm freewheeling means I'm actually generating power and recharging the battery. A couple of functions over here on the right hand side of the steering wheel then, I've got things like cruise control so I can set my cruise control and what it'll do is it'll actually, okay cruise control, cruise uh, allows you to control your speed without touching the pedal but it also allows me to follow the car in front so I can set how far do I want to stay behind that car and if they stop I'll also stop as well so that's really cool and there's a lane keep function so again depending on what, not on a road like this it doesn't really work as well but on a motorway it's going to attempt to keep you within the lanes and it's also going to warn you if you drift out of the lane as well, very useful if you're tired on a long drive. So from zero up to 100 kilometers an hour, the engine actually produces 184 horsepower based on the engine and the battery itself. And as you can see, zero up to 100 kilometers an hour is actually very, very fast compared to a diesel version. And don't get me wrong, I actually always love the diesel, but diesel is no longer available with CRV. So if you are going new model CRV, you gotta go for a two liter hybrid if you're based in Ireland now. And what a cool looking car. It's a really, really nice looking vehicle. What I really like about these cars is, they're a little bit different. There's so many common cars on the road that you see everywhere, Volkswagens, Ford, Toyotas, and they're all very good cars. But what I like about the CRV, it's something you pull into a petrol station or you see them parked, it's something a bit different. You haven't seen them everywhere, and that's what I like about it. It's nice to have something a bit different, but it's still a cool looking, tough looking vehicle, but it's actually, like we're saying, a little bit unique, and it's actually upmarket looking and classy, in my opinion. I love the taillights, they're a nice LED setup. These ones have this EHEV badge just to denote that it's hybrid. And this particular car has a set of side steps we'll talk about in a while. Headlights are a nice LED function as well. Even things like the front fog lights down low, they're a proper LED as well. The indicators in the rear, they're a nice LED. And even the indicators in the front of the car as well, they're also a nice LED. So a nice upmarket look to all the lighting on the car. On the right hand side of the steering then, the cruise control functions we talked about. Wipers will be completely automated as well. There's the paddles we talked about for going up and down and creating regenerative braking, if you want, you don't have to. And then things like the headlights will be automatic for daytime, nighttime, as well as fulls and dips as well. Controls in here for radio and media and music, and then Bluetooth functions down here. And then you've also got this trip meter in through here, which toggles through information like average speed, fuel efficiency, all the information that basically you would need in a car and things like this graph to tell you where the um, power is coming from. The gearbox is completely button based for park, reverse, neutral and drive. There's a push button, sorry, pull even automatic handbrake on the right hand side. And then there's the different modes you uh, can have. So things like sport or eco or full EV mode. But I find generally the car makes the best decisions if you leave it automatically. Dual zone climate control, so different temperatures on each side of the car. You have these hard buttons down through here for controlling the climate. There's also things like heated seats because we're in the elegance on the front uh, seats. But the other button here allows you to go into a touchscreen menu, which is a little bit more elaborate for the heating controls. Things like parking sensors, well, they're on the front of the car and it gives you warning on two screens. So over here and over here, and then you've got a big reverse camera, which you can have a large camera or a zone back in to have a little map to tell you where the obstruction is. And that's for uh, sensors and camera when you're going backwards. Down through here, a bit of storage, two USB points in through there. And down through here, then there is a little bit more storage 
uh, 12 volt power outlet down through there and you can move this and you have a bigger um, armrest with some storage back through there and the armrest is also movable as well there's two rear view mirrors so this one here it darkens itself and that's to look out the back window but there's another one up here called a conversation mirror and that means then you can look at the people in the car behind so you get the back window and the back seats which is pretty cool there's an sos function in through here so again if you're in an accident somebody will contact you from an independent call center to see if you're okay and if you need any help and then the lighting around the car is a nice led style all the way around uh, front and rear as well it's kind of hard to see in this light but it is more of a bluey led kind of setup one thing i really think is really top quality high class on these right get the safety belt you plug it in but watch this after you plug it in <laughs> see the way it tightens up i love that it's like an extra safety feature but it actually feels like you're in something you know upmarket and high quality and things like the head restraint behind me is anti-whiplash so you can pull it forward if someone hits you from behind it reduces how far your head goes back in the event of an accident too another thing is like all these doors have side impact protection beams there is airbag over here there's airbag over here there's airbag up here there's airbag down through there and then there's all the safety features we talked about like lane keep assist and there is autonomous braking which stops you hitting the car in front and even things on the wing mirror as well which is a blind spot indicator here so that means if someone is literally on your quarter panel back there and you couldn't see them they're just outside that they're in your blind spot basically where you couldn't see them that lights up to warn you that there's someone in a blind spot that you might not be able to see as you're changing lanes so it's pretty cool one thing actually for anyone that's got any more questions on safety i have other videos which i can send you so if you're just curious about it just stick in the comment section below and i'll forward you a link to a video that goes into the safety features on the car in more detail like what we talked about already the car is always cycling between a battery or an engine or a combination of both and as you see down here i mean you don't need to know this but it's actually telling you if you're consuming power where the power is coming from or if you're regenerating power another kind of cool feature on these again to do with safety as well it has a speed limiter okay nothing amazing there but it has an intelligent speed limiter so what that does is the car actually looks for speed signs so say for example if i'm coming into a zone and going too fast what happens is first of all see like the speed signs here the car recognizes the speed sign pops up it also reduces my power and it starts uh, warning me that I'm exceeding the speed limit until I get down to the proper speed limit and then I can start cruising away again. So it's pretty useful, again, if you're doing a lot of driving and you're unsure of the area. So I think it's fair to say the car is really safe and it's actually a really nice car to drive. I'd like to say, in my opinion, I think it's a really nice looking vehicle and it's something a bit different, but it's a really practical car as well. So let's have a look at things like the boot. So the boot in CRVs was always massive. If you look in around here, I think there's a really good load area in through there. But the other thing as well is you have a speaker in through here, you have lights on both sides, which I think is nice because it's just symmetrical. And the other thing on these is you can drop these seats forward really easily and you end up with a massive load area that's really comparable to something like a medium-sized commercial vehicle in terms of a light commercial vehicle. The back, if you look at the doors, check this out, look how wide those doors open. When you're trying to access a child seat or just generally get in and out, it's really, really brilliant. The interior is really nice in this elegance. It's a lovely beige interior, looks really classy, and it's actually just quite a nice place to spend a bit of time as well. Nice small details like brushed aluminium on the doors and the door handles. There's also excellent um, tweeters and speakers down in through here as well. There's gloss black along the door here as well. And then nice leather coating along through here. And then a chai lock for the doors and the windows. For anyone curious about the size in the back of the car, Headroom Savage, it really is, and I know, look, uh, yes, I am giving you a big sales pitch here, but actually there's a lot of room in the back of the car, and legroom, and I don't normally sit that far back, actually, I've let it back so you can get a better panoramic view of when I'm driving the car, I don't normally sit like that at six foot, so there's lots of space in through here, and you sit kind of upright, compared to some of the other cars in the market, okay, some of the things like Sportages and Tucson, they are smaller cars, but there's a lot more space going on, if you're moving into this size of car, there's more space back here, there just is, and things like the armrest into the centre, which is quite nice with a, a drinks holder. And down through here then, there is ventilation for the rear passengers, and about time there is two USB points. So they've gotten rid of the 12 volt, which makes total sense, because let's face it, everyone works off USB these days, or nearly everyone. In terms of the driver's door card, again, nice uh, brushed aluminium sections and gloss black and leather along through there with controls for uh, wing mirrors and also windows as well. And again, it just has a really nice beige leather interior and the seats, like the design on the seat. In terms of what you see along through here, again, it's just high quality, looks up market, and it's a nice finish. Just a couple of points of note then, there's a height adjustable seat, there's lumbar support for the driver's side, the steering wheel is completely rake and reach uh, adjustable, but because this is elegance, and it's less common on a lot of cars. You get the same controls for the passenger side. So again, height adjuster along through here and lumbar support for lower back for the passenger as well. Something that gets forgotten in a lot of cars. 
And like I was saying, I just think it's a really stunning looking car. This is the slightly facelifted version of the CRV as well. So you'll note if you're looking at some of the earlier two uh, 2020 models, they have a different wheel and they won't have that EHEV badge. And there's a slightly different interior in terms of where the USB points as well. So this is the latest model. But I mean, looking around the car closely, like even things like there's a nice big daytime running light and it just matches this bullnose grille. It's much more like the 2007 model to look at, which I think was actually a prettier car than what came after it. Um, in terms of, you have chrome here and chrome here and then there's chrome down the side and if you walk around the back of the car as well there's more chrome there so it's all very congruent but the other thing as well and even up along here there's more chrome as well chrome around the windows but what i quite like in this one is you have the brushed aluminium um roof rails up high but the steps are brushed aluminium as well and i suppose it just comes together and i think it actually works so like to say to you i think this is just a very nice looking vehicle and i keep saying it i know like a broken record here but it's nice to have something a bit different. So if you want information on this really, really cool car, Brian's my name, 086-843-1945. Call, text, WhatsApp, whatever suits, and I'd be happy to go through information on the car. The other thing about this car is it is a demonstrator that we registered um, just before Christmas. Um, so the car, uh, at the time of the video, there's about four and a half grand off it, and it has, zero, well, not zero, it's got about 20 kilometers on it which is really super small mileage. That means the car's done one drive. They come from the factory about 14 kilometers and there's now 20 and all that was actually the filming. So the car is actually a brand new car, um, but it's cheaper obviously than a brand new one for that reason. So I think someone's going to get really, really good value on something like this. Anyway, if you want information on the car, 0868431945, Brian is my name. Thanks for taking time to watch. Hopefully the video is useful.